provided all audio and video recordings in your possession to this committee, as we asked on July 15th, yes or no? I would have to get back to you. That, that. is a no. You're full of shit today. You're just being completely dishonest. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I want to. The Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle was incessantly grilled today by members of both sides of the aisle, leading to multiple unsettling moments during the lines of questioning, including a shocking revelation that she made to Representative Jamie Raskin. She was dodging questions left and right, which was frustrating, and as you saw at the top of show, led to some on the right, like Nancy Mace, giving in to their frustrations and uttering profanity on the floor. You also had, of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene dipping into her QAnon conspiracy brain like this. Was there a conspiracy to kill President Trump? Absolutely not. Then how did this happen? And why are you still sitting here not turning in your letter of resignation. But the people I want to focus this video on today are the Democratic superstars that were able to put party aside and really dig into the key issues of this whole thing. And we'll get to the shocking revelation that Representative Raskin uncovered in just a minute, but first, just for a taste of how absurd Kimberly Cheadle was being in this line of questioning, not answering questions, and having to be subpoenaed to even get there, just listen to this atrocious exchange where she continuously refuses to answer a simple question. You can understand, however, the anxiety we and the American public have about how could this happen and how can we ensure it can't recur. Now, there are some things my friends on one particular side of the aisle don't really want to talk about, like AR-15s and access to them by a 20-year-old, or anybody for that matter. Presumably, uh, Director Cheadle, the ubiquity of weapons, guns in America, especially assault weapons or semi-automatic weapons, that's helped your job and the mission of your agencies, right? It's, it's made it less complicated, isn't that true? I'm sorry, I'm not understanding your question. Real simple, more guns, especially dangerous ones, have made your job protecting people easier. Is that not right? I think at, uh, from every- Direct the cheater, this is simple English. More guns, are, do they make your job more complicated or less complicated in protecting these 36 clients and visiting heads of state and heads of government that come to Washington? I think the Secret Service needs to take into account... I didn't ask that. that they're in. I'm, I'm sorry. I asked a simple question, which deserves a simple answer. The ubiquity of guns, dangerous weapons in America, like AR-15s, has that made your job, that is to say the mission of the Secret Service, easier or more difficult? I think the threat environment for protecting our uh, Secret Service uh, protectees is always difficult, and that's dynamic, and it's always evolving. We stipulate it's always difficult. I, again, this is a simple one. Do, does the ubiquity of guns make your job easier or more difficult today? I understand the Second Amendment rights of individuals. I didn't ask that question. I'm not questioning the Second Amendment. I'm asking a simple analysis, Director Cheadle. And I can tell you, you're not making my job easier in terms of assessing your qualification for continuing on as director. Please answer the question. You're the head of the Secret Service. You're speaking on behalf of 8,000 members who put their lives on the line. We just had a failure by your own admission. Do guns make your job easier or harder? I think the job of the Secret Service is difficult on every day, and we need to make sure that we are mitigating all threats, whether that be That weapons, isn't my question. Personnel. That is not my question, and now I think you're evading the answer, which is not a hard one. I am sorry that you feel that way, sir. How else could I feel, Director Cheadle, when you're clearly avoiding a direct answer to a very simple declarative question? We almost lost a presidential candidate the other day. A 20-year-old had access to his father's AR-15 and got on top of a roof within 500 yards or feet of the podium. And I'm asking you, did the availability of that AR-15, which is replicated all across America, make your job harder or easier, and you're not willing to answer that question? And you think, and, and you wonder why we might have a lack of confidence in your continued ability to direct this agency? I understand your question, and that's the environment. Well, if you understand my question, why not answer it? Because it's the environment that the Secret Service works in every day. That doesn't tell me anything. 
That's the, that's the environment we work in. I had, an, I had an attack on my office a year ago. I know a little bit about violence, too. He came to kill me. When he couldn't, he beat one of my staffers eight times with a baseball bat on the head. We live with the threat of violence. But a simple answer from the director of the Secret Service would be helpful. And I'm sorry you've chosen to evade it. I yield back. That is utterly insane that she has that much trouble admitting that guns are a problem for protecting protected targets when the shooter had an AR-15 and was able to get up to a roof that was 150 yards away and with direct line of sight to Donald Trump. You would think, especially after something like this, that it is not political to say that the gun was an issue in this situation. And Jamie Raskin made those comments in his opening statements, but in this next clip, he was able to push he was able to push even further and uncover something pretty shocking about the events of that day. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's been uh, reported that before former President Trump got up on the stage at around 6 p.m. on Saturday, July 13th, that the local police had identified and even photographed a man who was acting suspiciously, and this man who turned out to be the gunman had been flagged as a potential threat. Is that accurate? What I can say is that the individual was identified as suspicious. <clears throat> so he was known to be suspicious before former President Trump took the stage. That is the information I have received. Why was he allowed to take the stage with a suspicious person having been identified in the crown? So I appreciate the question and I'd like to make two points. If the detail had been passed information that there was a threat, the detail would never have brought the former president out onto stage. That is what we do and that is who we are. We are charged with protecting uh, all, all of our protectees. So you distinguish between someone who is suspicious and someone who's threatening, is that we right? We do. There are a number of times at protective events where suspicious people are identified and those individuals have to be investigated and determined what is it that identifies that person as suspicious. So think about what you just heard there for a second, that there are people who are deemed as suspicious versus actual threats. And while the shooter was deemed suspicious, he was not investigated further or stopped from going on the roof, which is insane because then he became the exact threat that they're supposed to stop. And it's even worse when you remember that this suspicious individual had a rangefinder on him, a tool used by marksmen. And while Nancy Mays got her to admit that this was a colossal failure after much prodding, and there was a lot of talk, rightly so, about gun violence, which Republicans firmly pushed back on to the dismay of everyone, but the general surprise of no one. But I think AOC's response to this put this whole thing in the best way possible. So we will end with her remarks. Director Cheadle, respectfully, uh, what you had just laid out about 60 days. Uh, we are currently in the midst of a, um, of, of an especially concentrated presidential campaign in the moment. Uh, that is also paired with, of course, elections happening across the country. that are happening in about 100 days. So the notion of a report coming out in 60 days when the threat environment is so high in the United States, irrespective of party, is not acceptable. And I think it's very important to understand that. This is not theater. This is not about jockeying. This is about the safety of some of the most highly targeted and valued targets internationally and domestically in the United States of America. So the idea that a report will be finalized in 60 days, let alone prior to any actionable uh, decisions that would be made is simply not acceptable. It has been 10 days since an assassination attempt on a former president of the United States regardless of party. There need to be answers. Again, this party, this, this, this committee, this is not a moment of theater. We have to make policy decisions and we have to make them now. We do. And that may be a, a and that may require legislation. That may require policy that we must pass in the immediate uh, uh, term. And without that, we are flying blind. So the lack of answers and the lack of report is just simply not something that we can accept here.